Hi guys, I hope you can hear me. I have typical classic technology. It's all going wonderfully well until the very last minute when suddenly everything doesn't. But we are here, we are live. Welcome everybody. I very strangely found myself feeling quite nervous for the session. I feel kind of like I'm performing or playing a performance. So, you know, in all this crazy, I guess it's kind of cool to get back in the performer seat a little bit, put myself under some pressure again. Welcome everyone. Um, lovely to have you guys in the chat here. I'm really, really, really going to encourage you guys to just be active there. I'm going to be asking lots of questions. Um, yeah, so I am really, really, really looking forward to sharing with you guys. I think we're just going to give people a little moment to kind of just dial in and find themselves here. And while they are doing that, I am just going to chat a little bit um, to you guys about the situation where I am right now. Uh, we've also just gone into our 20 day or 21 day lockdown here in South Africa. I know many parts of the world, you guys are already in lockdown. You guys are much more experienced at it than we are right now. So I, um, I'm sorry, I'm just getting a comment here that you can't, somebody can't hear me. Um, if anybody else can't hear me, just please let me know. I had to switch out my microphones just very last minute. Um, uh, give me just a second. I'll just check. Anybody else having trouble hearing me by any chance or perhaps the level's just a bit low? That could also be a thing. I can turn my levels up a bit while I play with this. So as you guys know, this is my first uh, live stream. Very, very first live stream. So this is a little bit of a learning curve for me. Um, audio is fine. Okay, I am turning up the audio slightly uh, and then I can just turn down the volumes here. Okay, so the kind of feedback I would love to get from you guys um, is where you guys are at in terms of your flute playing right now. Have you guys been taking lessons in person? So have you had a physical teacher and you've had to move online? Perhaps you've not had any teaching and you're just kind of chilling, <laughs> learning online, doing your thing. Or perhaps you already are taking online lessons. Uh, just kind of wanting to get a sense of where you're at and what you're doing. Um, there are a couple of kind of topics, main topics that I want to cover today. The, the one big topic I do want to look at is just online lessons and and how we can kind of structure this, the things we need to be aware of, the kind of factors that get involved. For some of my students, and I know some of you are hiding in that chat, um, I would like to just say to you guys that I want you to stay on this because I want to show you guys some settings to really help you just improve your lessons. Uh, I've been playing with this a lot. As you guys know, I have been spending a lot of my last week just helping other musicians and teachers set up their studios. And I have learned a lot through this process. So I'm super grateful for this. Okay, the other things that I would love to go over is I would like to chat a little bit about some of the online resources that are available. Um, kind of two sides of this. The one side of this is like the apps that are available. Like there's some uh, music apps where you can actually get to download sheet music, buy sheet music, and then also some apps you can play along with and have some fun with, some practice apps, that kind of stuff. So I want to kind of dive into that a little bit. And I want to dive into some of the amazing awesome things that is happening on social media. There is such a like, wealth of information coming through and I am learning so much. I was watching a video by Amy Porter earlier, fantastic flute player. Um, there are videos by Paul Edmund Davies, Robert Dick has been putting up stuff for a while. Like These are top-notch players that finally have the time out of their busy schedules to actually put their, their knowledge into some sort of video format. So guys, there is so much here for us. Okay. I'm just going to uh, read through some of these comments. They're coming in quite quickly. Uh, I am here on my own today. Lockdown life. So <laughs> I'm going to be manning this ship on my own. Um, cool. I'm curious about online lessons. Birdie, that's great. I'm going to be chatting a little bit about that. You get a better idea what they're all about. Um, okay, cool. So I'm kind of getting the vibe that some of you have tried online some of you are having to go online there's kind of a transition period here which is a little bit scary and so I want to kind of walk us through what do you actually need to go online and to go online well because it's one thing to have lessons online but it's another thing to actually really get the most out of it 
And the thing that I really want to start with here, and it's something that as a kind of traditionally trained musician myself, I grew up having physical one-on-one -on -one lessons my pretty much my whole life. It, it's something first to get our minds around um, how this new medium works and to realize that yes, there are some disadvantages, like we do lose some things, but there are actually a lot of advantages to this medium. And I think it's been very interesting for me as a teacher uh, to go through this process, but also in the last week or so, starting to work with some of my younger students and just seeing how my teaching style is shifting there too. And in some ways is really shifting for the better. So I want us to really change this mentality that we are going to get less out of our lessons or that we're going to get less out of a teacher. It's just a different kind of a thing that you're going to be getting out of your teacher. And I really want to help us to get the most out of that. Okay, so the first things that I want to just mention are some of the benefits to having online lessons. Um, the one really obvious big benefit is the fact that you can stay at home <laughs> and not drive in traffic or as we have right now in this world where we actually physically cannot leave our homes or you know interact with each other in the normal way. So that is normal in normal, normal lifetime. That's a normal kind of advantage. Of course, now it's a necessity. The other really nice advantage though here is that you get to record your lessons, you could record them. Um, one of my favorite kind of aspects of teaching online is that it really forces the teacher to teach in a way that encourages you to become more independent and work more independently and it encourages the student to work more independently. And this comes down to silly little things like with my little nine-year-old student recently, you know, I'm like, where's your pencil? And I can't just take out my pencil and mark her parts for her. She has to get her own pencil. She has to remember to have it at the beginning of each lesson. And she has to mark in all her own breaths, little notes, all of that. So already at the age of nine years old, this child is learning to be independent and work independently. And that, I really believe, is incredibly valuable. Uh, I think it also kind of like trickles over into your practicing in the sense that by the time you are practicing, you are, you are thinking in this way as well. Your teacher has taught you to recreate those feelings and to really work independently. And so throughout the week, from lesson to lesson, you're not relying on somebody just playing with you or showing you how to play it or even necessarily playing it for you, but rather you are relying on building your own set of skills so that you can eventually do it for yourself. And this really brings me back to what my teacher used to always say to me, which was my job as a teacher or her job as a teacher is to make ourselves redundant. As teachers, we want to eventually be redundant. Like we do not want to have to teach you for 50 years. Although we never ever stop learning, that is real. But I still think this is such a great platform to help you to, well, as teachers, it helps us to make you guys more independent. And that is so important. Okay, guys, I'm going to just uh, check through some of these lovely comments coming through. Um, Okay, there's a continuous pitch peep. You know what that is? It's probably, and I will just move this away a little bit. It's probably, I've got this lovely new light that has given me the problems in the first place because it just booted out my microphone because it stopped working. Um, is the pitch peep a little bit better, guys? That would be, um, okay. All right, guys, I am scanning through some of these comments as best I can under the pressure. Okay, so I'm going to talk... I'm going to talk some kind of practical stuff right now. Now you guys will see that, um, yeah, you guys will see that I have put a bunch of links down below. There are a whole bunch of links there. So as we go, you guys can refer to those links. You can click on those links even and just kind of follow along as we go. Um, okay, moving through some more comments here. Okay, cool guys. It's so awesome to have all of you here. I just want to say um, I'm not obviously not going to have 100% time to respond to each and every single one of your comments, but I'm kind of just flashing through them and responding to questions as they come up. Although I'm going to be kind of touching on some of those questions a little bit later, so just stay tuned for that. Okay. Um, I'm just going to quickly just adjust the audio here again. Give me a moment. All right. Okay. Um, 
I hope that that audio is even better to now. I've just kind of turned it up a little bit um, and I hope that makes it a bit louder. Um, okay. So there are a couple of things that we need to kind of make sure are in place if we want to start having online lessons. And of course, the basic obvious one is a fast internet connection. It is going to be fairly important. Now, I've, I've, the first link I've included in that in our little description is a internet speed test you can do. There are a bunch. OK, the peep just got louder. <laughs> That's not helpful. Um, OK, turning it down again, guys. Sorry about that. Um, just give me a moment. The peep better now. Okay, I'm hoping that peep is better now. Any feedback? Peep better? Peep better, peep better. Um, okay, I'm hoping that peep is a little bit better. Please let that peep be better. As I said, guys, first live stream. Um, so I am just getting getting into this and starting, starting to understand it. Um, okay. Oh, okay, super. Okay, great. Um, I think the, the microphone was just a bit too high up. It is going to be quieter now, so you guys are going to have to just adjust your volumes up a little bit. I'm sorry about that. As I said, I have a external microphone here. Unfortunately, just before this whole thing, the setup, the light went out, and so I had to re-plug ports and stuff. So I'm so sorry about that. Okay. Um, as long as you guys can hear me... Okay, I'm going to turn it up a little bit more. Let's see if the if the audio gets better. <laughs> I love that comment. It sounded like my tinnitus. Yeah, no, no, I get that one. <laughs> I can't stand the peeping and so, this light does make a buzzing noise. So it is 10 p.m. here, guys, just by the way. So that is why I have a big blaring warm light like shining onto my face right now because it is quite late. Okay, so Internet speed, we were there. So internet speed is super important. There's a little test there. You click on that link and you can actually test your line speed. Okay, putting it down again. Uh, no, you don't need to have your flutes ready right now to play. Although you're welcome to play and practice. Today we're going to probably be mo doing more talking than playing. Although in future, um, I would like to, to move over more to uh, kind of doing little like live kind of tutorials where I'm answering questions and, and discussing different topics as well. Um, <laughs> she had to buy a generator. Yeah, no, that, that was a real thing. They, we had South Africa's had a bit of a rough ride in the last couple of years. We've had water crisis and power crisis and now Corona crisis. Um, so it's been a bit, it's been a bit crazy. Is it better? I'm hoping this audio is going to be the, the most kind of stable situation right now. So, okay, internet speed sorted. My recommendation, I usually teach on about 20 megabits uplo upload and download speed. Now, both are really important for online teaching or online lessons because you need to have that kind of up and download of the traffic. I'm no like, tech expert here. But, yeah, we need to have pretty good internet speed. That's basically it. Okay, hopefully the audio is good. Okay. The next thing that is going to be quite important you're going to need is you're going to need some kind of a laptop, a tablet, or a phone. Now, it's 89% good. Okay, look, you know what? I'm gonna, I would have been happy with that market school. <laughs> um, I don't really have two microphones switched on. Let me see, maybe if I disable one of my, my onboard microphone, perhaps then it will, uh, it will that that may actually help let me let me quickly do that for you guys um okay um i don't know if it's okay so I'm going to leave this on for now, guys. I will um, watch back. Hmm. 
Okay, there is another option. Um, the other option is I just click out the light. It's going to be a little bit darker, but at least maybe the sound will be nicer. Sound versus picture. I'm going to be doing some split screens or like some share screen stuff in a moment anyway. So perhaps that actually is going to be the nicer option. I'm going to quickly try that and let's see if it's better. Let's switch this puppy off. Okay, so we get a little bit more dark lighting, but let's switch in this other microphone, guys, and let's see if this is better. <gasps> actually, I may have a, a third option that I hadn't thought of. Give me just one little minute while I do this. Okay, I'm, I've got a nice, and this is actually one of the things that I wanted to talk through today. So why don't I just quickly segue into that while I'm at it. And that is microphones, because some of you asked me about recording and how to record and all of that. Now for online teaching. Okay, guys, can you hear me? Okay, can, uh, can you, am I back? Yes, I thought it would be back. So <laughs> this is a really, really, really great little opportunity for me to actually demo some of my nice microphones here. Um, and then I can switch this light even back on, which is fabulous. Is it better? Can we all hear me again? Yay, okay, great. So what I've just done, so what I was working off, originally my original plan, and I can bring him here into the picture. You guys know this little guy, or you've seen him around. Um, yeah. I switched off, I switched out the microphone. Okay, this is this is my little Samson Meteor microphone, which I usually try to use. It's a nice little USB microphone, really great guy. It's super duper duper simple. You literally just plug it in and it goes. So very, very, very easy to use. Um, right now, my issue is that I'm busy using USB ports for all the other stuff, and that's why this guy <laughs> had to be unplugged because um, I switched or I tried to default over to my other microphone. Um, oh, okay, the light course is, is that, is that, that could be very possible. That is the light. Well, in that case, I can switch the light off. I mean, we get some darker vibes or I can switch the, the light down. Is that better? Less peeping? Less peeping? <laughs> okay. Um, so the, yeah, so this microphone, this is my, my nice Samson microphone. In fact, while we are here, let me show you what this one sounds like. Um, okay. Well, if you guys are happy with the light, then I am happy with the light too. I'm just going to unplug my, no, I'm not going to unplug anything. I'm going to just switch microphones quickly so you guys can hear this. So here's, I'm going to switch us onto this, this little, little Samson Meteor, Meteor microphone, microphone right now. now. Better with light off. Ha! Huh, light, you have betrayed me. You have betrayed me. Why are you not coming up? Okay. Okay. The light is done. The light is gone. Leave. Leave my light. Okay, guys. Um. So, so basically, basically we've got, got the Samsung Meteor microphone, microphone and then we've got, got this little lapel mic over here, here which I don't actually think is connected right now. I think we're still going through my camera up here. here. Um, but we are working through the microphone from this Logitech camera, which is the camera I use. Oh my goodness gracious me. Okay, that's probably because there's two mics plugged in. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Are we stable? Are we set? Okay. I really hope so. <laughs> okay, guys. Okay, back on track for your equipment. Now, there is all kinds of fancy equipment. And as you can tell right now in this very situation, it is a little bit more confusing and tricky. And sometimes the setup gets a little bit more complicated. So, and this is seriously and genuinely my recommendation for 90% of my students. Just use your laptop use your iPad or your tablet or use your phone even. That's literally all you need to do. It is very, 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 very simple. It's a very, very like low, you know, low cost if you've got the stuff already solution. And most of the time you don't have all these problems that I've just had. Okay, um, some of these comments I think are coming in a little bit later. Um, is it still echoing right now in this very moment as I say those words? Very important for me to know. 
still echoing. There's an echo. No! Sorry, there was another microphone plugged in. Okay, no more echo. No more echo. Please play no more echo. Still echo. Oh my goodness gracious life. Okay. Um. Let me just see if I can work these filters. No filters. Okay, please no more echo. I see no more echo. Yay! No more echo. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I really appreciate the patience. The patience now. Okay. Good. We're all good. We're all good. We're all good. Maybe I should have just done this live stream on my phone. That would have been way easier to do. Okay. Cool, guys. Thank you so much for your feedback and for your patience. You guys are amazing. Um, yeah, I, I, I just don't tell you why, maybe I do, I don't know, but I really just appreciate you guys so much and I think you're just an awesome community and in times like this, I can see why. Um, okay, so we need good internet, we're going to need a laptop, a tablet or a phone, which usually have got pretty decent cameras built into them, especially the Apple products, like guys, really, they've got such nice microphones and cameras in them that there's no problem. Um, so if you've got that stuff, you are ready for an online lesson. I'm dead serious. You are ready for an online, online lesson. You do not need more than that. Okay. I will play a song in a moment, guys. I promise I'll lighten the mood with some music. Um, and I'll let you guys decide. Well, actually don't do that. I'm very bad with most, like, I'm really bad with knowing what songs are. Like people are like, play the song. I'm like, mm-hmm. Okay. I'll play it. Um, guys, the other thing you're going to need, and this is what I want to spend a little bit more time on today, is you're going to need some kind of a calling app. Some of you have mentioned Skype. Now, Skype is definitely an easy option, especially if you know how to use Skype already. I'd say definitely try Skype. But I use an app called Zoom. And this is the point where I'm going to ask my students, put your hands up there in the chat section, and just please assure everyone that Zoom is actually a really simple and easy app to use, even though it may seem a little bit more complicated in the beginning. So I'm going to just walk you guys through Zoom a little bit today. I'm going to share my screen in just a moment. And I want you guys just to have a look at what Zoom looks like and what's going on here. Okay. So, uh, if you just give me a small second. Um, here we are on Zoom. Um, give me just a moment as I check that you guys are all seeing this. Yes, Zoom is great. Okay, can you guys see my screen? That is an important question I'm gonna just ask you. Can you see my nice Zoom screen? Yes, Zoom is way better. And, and the interesting thing is when I started teaching a couple of years ago, um, I, yeah. Um, yeah, when I started teaching a few years ago, I found Zoom. Um, I think it was suggested to me by colleagues of mine as well. They suggested that I use Zoom, but I... Yeah, no, sorry, I'm getting distracted. I literally just, I, that was the app that I chose. But I never really was like sure that that was really like the best app. I guess I just sort of defaulted. I got a bit complacent and I just stuck with it because I knew how to work it and I had all my students on it. But I must say in the last week, having done all the research that I've done and gone into everything, I can quite seriously and genuinely say Zoom is the way to go, guys. Like I, it really is just... Um, the most stable app. I've just discovered some really nice audio controls in Zoom that really improve the audio quality and make it much easier to teach. Um, so 
overall, I really, 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 really can only recommend Zoom and I think it is a really great app to use. Um, yeah, sorry, I... Not the most amazingly gifted at this live streaming thing yet, but I will get there, I promise. Okay, I can actually use my nice... I've got this very fancy thing on my phone where I can control the screens from here, which is super cool. So I'm going to quickly um, just move us into Zoom here. So this is basically what Zoom looks like. Um, you've got your kind of meeting, uh, your four kind of con main controls here. So your new meeting, that is obviously for the teacher. I'm creating a meeting. You can join a meeting. Um, for those of you who don't know Zoom, you can basically click on this. And then there's a, a ID that comes up that you've got to put in there into that box, which your teacher will send you and then you will join the meeting and every meeting in Zoom, this is very different to Skype, every meeting has a very specific little ID that's created for that meeting and that's really super important for you to know because not you cannot use the same meeting ID twice necessarily unless your teacher set it up that way. So unlike Skype where you just kind of like phone into each other, you've got to be quite careful about your, these IDs and putting in the correct ID, otherwise you are not going to line up in this right meeting. But usually what your teacher is going to do, and I'm going to show you this over here, is your teacher is just going to send you an email with your ID, you're going to click on your ID. Now what will happen is it will automatically open in browser, in Zoom, and what will happen is, in my case because I already have the app, it's not going to do it, but what will basically happen is it will start to download a file automatically. Now, for some browsers, you're going to have to click on that file and actually open the file and install it. For other ones, it just automatically starts doing that and it's not a problem at all. If you have already got Zoom, you're literally just going to go on open Zoom meetings like this. No stress, no problem. And you are going to join. Now, of course, I'm not going to join because I've got the camera already in action in this live live feed so it's a bit confused I'm not going to join my audio right now although normally you would join your audio over here um, because if I do that now it's also going to be conflicting so we're just going to leave sleeping dogs lie in terms of our audio for now now I can do and I'm going to do this for you guys is I'm going to actually just join into my into the zoom meeting from my phone so I just want to find the correct meeting that I actually sent to myself. Um, it's student's name. Okay, great. So I'm going to quickly start here on this side. And in a moment, there I am. Um, it usually does take a little bit of time, but basically you are going to join your meeting in that way. It's just connecting. Okay, I'm gonna, sorry, normally you would absolutely join your audio, please do not get me wrong. And there I am, twice. Hi guys. <laughs> okay, there's a really important little setting here that I want to show you guys, and that is an audio setting that really is going to change your audio. So I wanna show you this quickly. It's here on the side, you're gonna click on this little arrow here next to the join audio. You're going to click on audio settings here. Now, please, students, all my students, I really want to encourage you guys, or any of you that have been using Zoom for a longer time, please update your Zoom. The new Zoom, which I have updated, it's here, has got new controls that the old Zoom didn't have, that the last version didn't have. So really update your Zoom, get the Zoom sorted, and you can do exactly what I'm doing right now. You will see on the old version, it's, it's not possible. So that's just really, really, really important. Um, you can just click on their website and either re-download the whole thing or there is a way that you can actually look for an update. I'll show you that in just a second. Okay, so you're going to click on advanced settings. And the really super important thing you want to do here is you want to suppress persistent background noise. You want to disable this. This is really important. It'll be set on auto, but you absolutely want to disable this. And the reason for that is is that when you play your instrument, Zoom, the software in Zoom is very smart and it recognizes your voice, but it thinks your instrument is background noise. And so it tries to suppress it. It literally squashes the sound and it cuts it out. And so as a music teacher or as a musician, this is super annoying when you're having a lesson and then suddenly you can't hear your teacher or your, your teacher can't hear you. So if this is what's happening, here is your problem. 
So you're going to disable both the persistent and the intermittent background noise. Just disable both of those. You can also just click on this. Uh, make sure this box is ticked. It usually will be unticked. You can just tick it. Make sure that it's ticked. Um, and I'll show you what we'll do with that in a moment. Okay, so I'm back in my meeting. Hi, hi, hi. And basically, although this control is not coming up here, um, but basically there will be a um, there will be a little box over here that should say um, turn original sound on, which you can then click and you can switch it on. If you have your uh, persistent background noise and intermittent background noise activated, this shouldn't be a problem because that should actually already be sorted. So disable those two guys and you are sorted. I'm going to end this meeting quickly. I'm going to end it here quickly. We're back in Zoom. Okay, guys, for those of you who are needing to do an update, this is now just creating a video. For any of you who are wondering, you can have it recording. You can record your lessons, and then it creates a little video file, which then saves into your documents into a Zoom folder. Okay, I'm going to stop converting because I don't need it. Okay, if you click here, on, if you have your open screen, and you click there on your little face, or whatever icon you have up there, you can actually just go right here to click for updates or check for updates, sorry. And you can just actually check if your version of Zoom can be updated. Otherwise, I said go onto your Zoom uh, website and just re-download the whole thing and reinstall it. Uh, if you're having any problems, I would just really recommend doing that. It's the easiest and quickest way. Okay. I'm back. I'm back. Um... I'm going to just check through some of your comments again and just have a look at what's going on here. Okay, we said yes, yes, yes. Um, okay, Telenor, there's a, there's a nice platform for small groups apparently. I'm definitely going to check that out. I'm going to chat about some other platforms in a moment as well. Um, okay, Zoom. And here is the wonderful thing about Zoom. It is free. It is 100% free. It is so, so, so great. Now, free for one-on-one -on -one lessons. You can have unlimited number of one-on-one -on -one lessons for free, which is super, super, super awesome. If you would like to have group sessions, now I have got on Patreon, we do a little performance class. Uh, we're actually having one coming up on Sunday. And for that performance class, we're gonna probably be about 10 people in the class. We are probably going to need to upgrade, but only I need to upgrade. So only your teacher needs to actually have that version if they wanna do group classes. You carry on using it as you were, which is really, 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 really cool. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, the Arlene, thank you. She, she, it's, it's really, really, really low stress, low fuss, very easy to use. Um, I advertise this and I apologize to all my plus 70 year old students, but I, I genuinely, we've got like scores of plus 70 year old students that are tech phobic shy, afraid, and they manage just fine with this. So all I can say is, is that I really think it's a great, great, great app. Okay. Um, so okay, I'm just having a look through some comments here again. Yes duets really 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 important and good question and this is going to kind of segue me a little bit into the next part of this um, live session you cannot play duets as easily on zoom or on online platforms at all there is a slight delay in the sound it's not in real time and so the issue is is that you if you start playing with each other you are going to lose each other now if you've got a very good teacher or a good musician they may be able to play play for you and you play along with what they're playing on their end you will be coming through to them delayed so it'll be delayed it is quite a workout for the ears and for the brain i sometimes even just take out one of the earphones and just kind of have one earphone and and kind of like make sure it's quite soft so that i can't you know that i that i don't get too distracted and generally i kind of just tap my foot quite vigorously now this works probably easier for more beginner players and more the more beginner kind of little duets. Obviously the more advanced duets, this is not possible. Like I think it's a bit too much to ask. Also, and I just want to say that 
like especially for the more high high kind of piano big piano accompaniments or the kind of more advanced stuff I just don't think this is going to be the solution to try and play along with each other it's, I sat through a whole webinar last week fantastic webinar on this and it's just I mean most of these professionals and teachers are saying it's just not going to happen but and this is where it gets really cool because there are some other options so the first really nice little option, and I've started doing this with a lot of my students, and I'm going to be doing more of it, is to actually, the teacher can pre-record little duets. So you can actually like just record you playing the other part and send it through to the student, if you're a teacher here, um, or ask your teacher, is it possible to record the accompanying track? All they need to do is just count you in nicely, like they would in the lesson, record it, doesn't even have to be anything fancy, and then you can play with them. Um, oh, that, thank you. I will definitely, I actually really want to contact just another flutist because uh, we have actually sort of very briefly spoken about potentially doing some collab, collab stuff and um, maybe doing some like interviews. Maybe now's a nice time for that sort of thing. So I will definitely be in touch with her and I will get some live streaming advice because I think she's the pro at this right now, at least in terms of the flute live streaming stuff. Cool. Um, hi Bart, lovely to have you here, welcome to this channel, very very cool to have you here. Um, okay, so that's my first suggestion. Teachers, you could just record the little kind of snippet and send it to your students. The other options though would be to use some of the available kind of recorded tracks or accompaniment tracks that are available. And <laughs> um, Okay, Iris, I'm so, so glad um, that that helped, by the way. That is really, really, really cool. Um, be, I mean, that also about the background noise stuff, because I think that is that is honestly changed. I was struggling with this technical issue for a, a little while, and the, weirdly, it doesn't happen with everybody, but suddenly, like, the thing came. And to be honest with you, I think Zoom have, in their latest update, they've really fixed this issue. They've obviously realized it's a bit of an issue and they've created a, um, a solution that's a lot more like user-friendly. Like the old solution, you had to log into the website and it was like, ah, crazy. So this is definitely the better solution at this point. Um, okay, I'm going to show you some of these accompanying tracks. Sorry for jumping around here a little bit, guys. But I want to show you some of these websites that I have discovered uh, and a lot of students have sent me their suggestions of what is great and what is awesome to use. I have put all of the stuff down in the links below. So this is something you guys can absolutely go and have a look at, explore, check out. And as always, if you guys have got some suggestions down there, please, 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 please. Sorry, I'm pressing crazy things. Sorry about this, guys. I'm doing something. Okay, sorry. Going crazy, but I hope you guys are seeing my... Um, I wonder if I can... Okay. So, here is the one website that I really like. Um, this here is called To Play Along. Now... I will say some of these tracks are better than other tracks like some of these tracks i didn't really enjoy that much uh, particularly i was playing along with um the bach Gunnar of maria and there were some like mistakes in the piano part so there, there are some things but then i was playing along with the mozart concerto and it actually worked great like it was actually really 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 fun and beautiful and wonderful to um yeah i sorry i pressed a wrong button so like I got these like nice little control things here on my phone, but I'm not so great at this yet. All I can say, guys, is I hope I'm demoing for you guys that technology is a little bit overwhelming sometimes. I totally get it, but I really think we can all manage. Really, this is like my fourth time trying to live stream. My patrons know I'm really, this is not my, you know, strongest thing, but I'm learning and I'm putting myself out there because I think it's important for us to embrace the changes and embrace kind of what we need to be doing right now and unfortunately that is just embracing technology because it's kind of our like literally our window and our door to the outside world right now okay i'm going to um put us back so 
um, we're going to go back here to the screen and I'm going to show you this other website that is really quite nice. Uh, to be totally honest with you though, I haven't got this 100% working on my desktop yet, but I've really had a student that's been using this and has absolutely loved it and has raved about it. So it's called Take 7. It is a paid, so where is the other this site to play along? You can do three of these a day for free. So you can literally choose three of these tunes and have fun with it, which I think, you know, like you could get quite far with that in a day. Uh, take 7. There are some free stuff, and I think I downloaded here the Mozart Flute Quartet, which sounded awesome. Like, I don't know if, I don't even know if I play this. You probably might not even be able to hear it. But it sounded, you know, it sounded pretty decent for backing tracks. Like, it sounded cool. So, definitely an option, but um, as I said, there are some free stuff, but there's a lot of stuff that you pay for. Um, I think with To Play Along, you have, like, a subscription. You, like, pay a certain amount, and that's what you pay. Um, and then you can have, like, access to everything. Now, the very famous, very popular one is, of course, TomPlay. This is, I think, one of probably the leading sites at the moment in terms of play-along stuff. You'll see they've got tons and tons and tons of music for all kinds of things. I have searched here for flute, um, and there's all kinds of things you can play along. Mozart, you know, flute and harp concerto, slow movement, really beautiful things. And, and the interface, when you go into it, and I don't know if I have any, uh, I suppose you can just view, you'll see the actual interface is quite cool because you kind of get the music in front of you like this. Um, there's a little kind of bar there you can see that plays. And there's actually all kinds of other features in the app itself, which is really awesome. So you get things like little metronomes. You can change, adjust the volume, I mean the speeds, obviously the volume, but you can adjust the speeds. Um, you can kind of click on the bars and it'll take you back to that, that point. Uh, which is really practice useful for practice so these apps are awesome these apps are really 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 awesome and i think you know we didn't have this stuff like 20 years ago we didn't have the stuff even 10 years ago I, I dare say we had the quality of stuff that we do five years ago um okay so i'm getting some other nice suggestions coming through here smart music um definitely gonna go check that out as well um, if you guys have any other app recommendations of apps that you can play along with, I really, I'm going to ask you just to put them nicely in the comments there, because, uh, I think this is where I'm really wanting us to all share a little bit on things that have worked for us on apps that we find useful specifically for this area right now. There's one other app that I tried on my phone, which is called Metronaut. And once again like some of it was really cool like I played along with one of the tracks and I was like oh okay this is really nice and then I played something which was like more orchestral and it was shocking like it was really horrible it sounded like a tin can it I almost want to say it was worse than my audio at the beginning of this video which you know it's it could happen it could happen so um I yeah I, I'm gonna say that's pretty much where I'm at in terms of those play along apps what i want to move on to a little bit is the apps where we can just flat out download sheet music like sheet music apps and the obvious very popular very good place to go my home away from home when it comes to sheet music is absolutely and of course our good old friend imslp and i'm going to put it up right over here so here we have it imslp um, I've also once again put in the keyword search the app I mean the website doesn't look particularly fancy it doesn't look particularly nice but it is absolutely awesome because it basically is a directory of all the flute pieces that are in public domain and this means you can download the stuff you can play the stuff you can use the stuff you can do what it, well you know be gentle with it but you can pretty much do um, You've got full rights to use it uh, in, in whatever way you'd like. Um, it's music that's been, well, in South Africa, it's a 50 year, I think in the US it's 75 year uh, age. So the composer has been dead for at least 75 years. That's the kind of uh, qualifying factor, although there are some other weird like factors involved that I do not understand. Um, 
it's really, really cool. And there are amazing things. And I'm going to show you some of the things that we have, for example, on here. So this is a nice little book. One of my students was playing earlier. It's Curler Studies. There are loads of etude and study books on this thing. Like all the Anderson books, basically. Pretty much all the Curler books. Garibaldi. Like it is awesome. On my website, I do believe I've pulled this up here as well. On my website, at some point, I actually did a directory of all the studies that I found on IMSLP and this was about two years ago so I'm sure this has improved a lot like I'm sure there are a whole lot more etudes and I've kind of organized them for you guys in beginner easy intermediate and just kind of gone through them like that for you guys and then these beautiful babies I think this is honestly one of the coolest things you know how expensive these books are Taufan al right here like you used to pay like thousands okay of rands that's like but like hundreds of dollars for one of these books really really expensive and guess what Ta-da! it's all available for free online absolutely awesome I, I think that's amazing I really think this has opened up uh, I think you know I've spoken to some of my subscribers about this in the past of really what we call democratization or democratization of information media um i'm slp is for any instrument yes i'm seeing some of the nice stuff come in i'm actually going to chat a little bit about tone story in a moment i i found this app and it's so cool so heather thank you i'm going to actually um show everybody this app i was i was really having a, a jaw with it that's the south african word for like having a good time with it i'm sorry um yes yes exactly exactly Th this is that's the thing this stuff is free. It's free. It's so useful. It's such an amazing, amazing, amazing website. It's so awesome. So I've left the link in the description again with the specific flute tag so you guys can go trawl. I mean, there are hundreds of pieces of music there. It just goes on and on and on. So guys, definitely really a useful, very, very, very useful tool. Um, and it's always expanding. In fact, I think, if I'm not mistaken, um, I know in South Africa, like Iber, the Iber concertos and all the Iber pieces just became public domain, which means that stuff's already up there. Like, it's so awesome. Okay. Um, so that's the one app. I'm going to get to, I'm going to get to Turnstone in a moment. I, I, it's an unexpected little fun app that I found that I was also, I was a little bit skeptical of, but I was like, huh, this is actually quite fun. So, I'm going to just bring us back here to our nice screen. So this is uh, IMSLP. Lots of really cool stuff on there. But there are some other really great websites that we have in the meantime. The one very, very well-known one is Flute Tunes. Flute Tunes, Flute Tunes. I absolutely love this website for various reasons. Um, the one reason is that they've just got a massive amount of pieces of music for the flute. <laughs> quite simply put they've got a lot of arrangements they've got a lot of original stuff it's really really awesome so yeah I, I really 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 recommend this um, website to look for tunes and what else I really love about it is that they have got pretty decent editions and editions are very important now you'll see on IMSLP some of the editions like you get editions that are, they look like handwritten and stuff because they literally, somebody uploads the original version. Like here, for example, you can get the Mozart Andante in C for free. That's right. Um, let me see if I can get one of these editions here. So this is like an edition where it's actually like Mozart's original um, or a copy of the original. It doesn't have to be the original. It could also be a copy of the original. Um, but editions are really, really, really important. And any of my students that work with me will know this because the problem is music that was written before the 1800s, basically. Um, sometimes, you know, that, that's like a rough timeline, like it you know, can go in both directions a little bit. But usually a lot of what was meant to be played in the music was not actually written in the music. So Bach, for example, no dynamics, no articulations or very little of them. Okay, there you can see an original text so just be careful about like making sure that you get a, a you know a halfway decent edition because you don't want to be stuck playing something you can't actually read but usually they are typed out what we call typeset versions so if you look i'm just going to show you this guys because it does seem like 
uh, IMSLP is new to some of you, which is awesome. I'm so excited to show you guys this. So if you click into it, there's sometimes even nice recordings here you can listen to. So lovely recordings that you can listen to. And uh, the recordings are usually in red. I don't think they have any here. Oh, there's even an accompaniment track. Ha, huh, that's cool. I'm sorry, I'm going to actually just play this because I'm super curious. What does the sound like? If you guys like, I, don't, I have no idea, I, I, my speakers on this laptop are not terribly loud. Uh, but if you guys like, I I could play, I could literally play um, a little bit of, of Mozart or something like that just now with that accompanying track. How cool is that? Okay, yes, 8 Notes is actually one that I forgot to um, bring up, is a great, another little app uh, called 8 Notes, literally like the number 8. I'll put it into my browser in just a moment. Flute tunes, back to flute tunes, why I love flute tunes as well, is so the addition. So, as I was saying, a lot of those composers, they didn't put in all the articulations and dynamics and all of that. So very often, you'll see additions, somebody else has written in articulations, dynamics and all of that. You're not getting the original composer's work. We are expected to put those things in, um, in a specific style. But what sometimes happens is we get additions like, love, love, love Rampal's additions, I mean, not additions, I love him as a player. Obviously, he's like a giant. But his additions were, were written in a very romantic style because that's the kind of style of playing that he was playing in. It's a different kind of culture of playing. So we do have to be just a little bit careful with additions. And this is where I love flute tunes because they are quite good with keeping their additions pretty clean. Um, I can show you, for example, we've got a Locatelli here. Um, also, yeah, all free. They even sometimes have little accompanying tracks. They definitely are, have these MIDI tracks um, and like MP3 little tracks, which sound like a computer playing. But I mean, if you want to know what the piece is more or less going to sound like, it's very useful. Um, okay, this one does actually have quite a bit of of articulations in it. But yeah, generally, I do I, I like a lot of the additions uh, on flute tunes. So probably not as like good as some of the like you know word text like baron writer or on imslp you get some really nice clean editions as well but it's good it's solid um and tons of stuff on here as well really tons and tons and tons of stuff so go check that out i'm not like harp on this for too long okay um moving on to my other favorite new little website that i have uh, discovered and the reason i've discovered it is because so the tough bear stuff all on MSLP. The Reichert stuff and the Altes, all of that on MSLP. But when it comes to Moise's stuff, Marcel Moise, we don't have it. It's not in public domain. But wait, because we have something amazing that goes down in this part of the world. And that is if you sign up with Scribd or Scribd, I don't actually know exactly what it is. Now, this is a paid service. Um, they give you a 30-day free trial. It's like a little subscription free, 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 no, fee that you pay. Definitely not free. You pay your little fee. It's kind of like the Netflix of flute, basically. <laughs> Let's put it that way. But pretty much all the Marcel Moy stuff is on here. And guys, once again, if you have any concept about how much these uh, Marcel Moy's books cost, they are so expensive and so this is once again I, I really think if you are wanting to get access to these books plus a lot of other pieces repertoire all kinds of things and outside of flute like there are books on there and magazines and articles and like just so much stuff on there I honestly think it's it's worth 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 your while um, to sign up for it and, and get um, into that I don't know if any of you have got a script account anyone 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 um, but I really, yeah, I'm, I cannot recommend it enough. It's really awesome. Okay. Um, I think, yeah, Eight Notes is another one. There's another one called Free Scores. Also got a lot of arrangements and, and nice little pieces on there. So there are a bunch of pretty nice little um, sites around that do have a lot of music on them. Also nice arrangements. And I know there probably are some with, for pop music as well. I don't know the copyright stuff around that stuff is very difficult and challenging so I sort of stay away from that 
Of course, you guys know I also do, and I'm starting to do more and more and more arrangements on my own website. Um, I'm hoping eventually to get to the point where I will also create some of that stuff for free. I'll have some free ones and some paid ones and all of that. Um, right now, just because it is like hours and hours and hours of work at this point, I'm not yet at the point where I can make all of it free, but hopefully I will work my way up to that. So these uh, arrangements I'm doing are often for like flutes, flute combinations, flute choirs or flute quartets or whatever it might be. And I do include backing tracks with those. So that's really nice. I actually play the backing track. So you're playing with a live human being rather than a MIDI file or a computer. And that is probably my biggest criticism with most of these kind of uh, software programs is that very often the backing tracks sound a little bit like a computer, a robot. <laughs> they just do. And sometimes they're not very musical. And that's a real challenge because, and I've, having done these kind of tracks, like you have to be very metronomic and you have to keep it like really steady so someone can play along with it. But somehow you also want to have some kind of music. And I do think it makes a big difference, uh, the quality of the track you're playing with in terms of your own musical expression. There's a nice YouTube channel I've posted down below as well that I found, which has got like, they've got like orchestral accompaniments and stuff as well, which I also think is actually quite nice. And actually is really, um, well, it's free, but it's also pretty good quality. Like, so definitely worth a while, but even just put, like search for it on YouTube. There are plenty of tracks available out there that you, you need to kind of scroll through and do a little bit of due diligence, listen to it, work with it. Um, yeah, I think the, the biggest issue often comes is that people don't, like, they don't count you in properly. Like, that is the biggest thing that I've seen sometimes, yeah, just happening that people don't do. Um, thanks, guys. That, <laughs> thank you. Uh, that's really kind. I really have been thinking kind of how to, whether to start a new flute boot camp you know coming up now or to just kind of do the old one and, and re kind of work those videos and kind of do like i don't know take us through a second try of all those videos and and work with that i will i will kind of get there i have another little project coming up um it is kind of happening on my website already i'll probably start this early next week but it's basically going to be like a little practice challenge that i'm going to be doing on like instagram and facebook mostly um and that's you'll see it's basically creating little practice challenges for you guys to work with every day um so yeah yes okay i'm seeing a comment about abrsm apps now abrsm have done a great job in creating a lot of apps for us they have created scale playing apps where you can play along and play your scales <laughs> do i find piccolo's annoying oh <laughs> uh, you know i think Every professional flute player has to make peace with the piccolo eventually. Carl, my friend, is going to hate me for saying this because he loves the piccolo. But we have to eventually kind of just make peace with it. Um, but to be honest with you, I've kind of learned to love the piccolo. I really enjoy the challenge of it. Um, it often puts me back into my student's like position because the piccolo is much more challenging and the stuff that I tell my students to do the whole time like relax and support and all of that I find myself having to like tell myself when I'm playing the piccolo just because I don't play it every day um so yeah I've, I've made peace with the piccolo so I don't find it super annoying but maybe if you played like 10 piccolos fortissimo in my room I, I would probably find you and kill you I'm serious <laughs> okay Cool. I'm glad you guys are liking the sound of those little practice of those little uh, sessions. It's really more like a little challenge and you'll see they're going to be like very simple, silly little challenges. Um, but just to kind of like keep us going and keep us inspired. But yeah, as I said, I'm, I'm working or thinking about doing a bit of a, like a 30 day flute boot camp, restart, revamp, reboot. I don't know if I'm going to use old videos or create new ones yet. Haven't got that far. Um, it, I guess I need to kind of watch through the old guys and I think my videos have improved a lot since then, so it's it's always difficult, you know. Like with music, we are constantly growing and learning, so it's always part of the process. Okay, guys, I, um, I'm just trying to think. I know I want to speak still about Tonestra, and I'm going to speak about it in just a second. I'm just going to look if there were any other of these little apps that I just wanted to show you guys. Um, but no, I think that was it. Yes, ABRSM, so 
just I got cut off there with comments my brain is like a I don't know five-year-old child um, yes tuna apps tuna apps tuna apps um, now the, the issue with tuna apps is and and metronome apps is you do want to find good ones you want to find ones that are actually uh, really going to be correct I actually have got an old-fashioned tuner still um, and my advice here would be to just go and research actually which apps are um, highly rated my advice is though to find specific apps for tuning the flute and not for like guitar or another instrument um, I, I'm no expert here but I believe that the like the way that it's going to pick up your sound is going to be slightly different and the way it's going to process your sound is slightly different um, Hi Charlie, you struggling with your F and your E flat notes? Um, are you struggling in them in the very high register or in the middle register? I'm trying to focus and keep things, you know, on, on the tech side of things for today. Um, I will be doing kind of more flute specific technique stuff at, at some point as well. But I have seen that question coming. Um, oh, okay. Somebody has been answering, answering there as well. Thanks guys. Yes, yes, they they really do sound super. So you, you're talking about those apps that that kind of create that the bass tone, the <laughs> tone. And to be honest with you, I don't think I've ever really come across even in like a normal tuner that doesn't have a terrible, terrible um, kind of like bass low, bass like what do they call that like frequency pitch thing. Um, so what I'm what I'm going to hi Nico. I'm glad you've discovered my boot camp, and I hope it's keeping you nice and fit in these days um what i'm going to suggest though is and I, this is an app that i was playing with a student it's a specific flute tuning app uh it seems fairly fairly decent i uh, just let me find my little apps here again it is called ah <laughs> super original it's called flute tuner <laughs> that's literally the name of the app uh it does seem to be pretty like pretty on point like it seemed it's it you know it picked up my intonation pretty good if you can find those nice apps that really tell you if you're going flat or sharp those are really 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 helpful um yeah da tuner i remember that one for android i think when i had an android phone still that's the one that i was using uh it is a great one so guys yeah keep 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 your recommendations for a nice um yeah the cogs they are such such wonderful uh little little things you know I had such an interesting experience uh, like about a year ago I went out and I bought I was actually going to look at a piccolo that I thought was a, pic a different piccolo than it actually was and it was it wasn't the model that I was looking at but um the girl was basically selling a whole bunch of uh guys can I just have a moment here can we just have a moment here I'm sorry to interrupt my story but my doctor Bridget Sullen and Rennie my teacher from for a long time is on here she is saying tunable is good and because she was my teacher I'm gonna say tunable is a great app please use that guys hi Bridget so great to have you here so um, as I said I was buying a piccolo getting this piccolo and in the end I didn't buy the piccolo but I left with a whole bunch of music books and an, a tuner and a metronome because the girl was you know selling the stuff so I took this tuner home and I was like, oh, I got my phone, I don't really need it. But can I just say the, the difference that you can put your phone away, and this is what I am going to say, these apps are all fabulous and they're great and they're wonderful to work with. But the fact that you can put your phone away, have it out the way, and just work with your tuner and your metronome and not be distracted by millions of messages and all of that stuff is so awesome. And it is, there's a lot of, a lot of value in that. And I think it's like, in terms of the things you want to invest in, that's one of those things that I really, a tuner, a good tuner and a good metronome, absolutely invest in it. Because the thing is, you know, when you spend money like that in your practicing and you invest in something like an app, uh, not an app, you invest in something like a tuner or a metronome, it's amazing how that also changes your attitude towards your instrument. Because suddenly I was like, okay, I'm going to use my metronome. I'm going to use my tuner because I've like bought these things, like I've paid for them. I've put my hard earned money into these things. 
And so it totally changes your mindset, how you approach your practicing and how you work with these things. So in terms of a metronome and a tuner, if you can, there are great apps and I do use them, especially my metronome because I'm often like on the go, but why not, why not do yourself a favor and actually just order a nice one. Uh, Korg brands are super great. I think it's the Psychos are also really nice. The Psycho, Seiko, I don't know how to say it. Um, also really great brands. I will be creating, actually, it's kind of on my to-do list, uh, like a gear, a gear, kind of the gear that I really recommend every flute, flutist or flautist has in their practice room. And I'll be putting that up on my website and I'll let you guys know when that's available. So you can go check on the different kind of things that I do recommend. Okay, guys, um, oh, Tonestra, Tonestra, we are finally there. Okay, this is a really nifty and cool little app. Can I just say it? So basically, and I'm going to actually even just show you guys uh, what this looks like. And maybe if you guys like, I can play for you guys now. Maybe now's a good time to play. But basically, it's really great for sight reading. That's kind of one of its, of its big things. And I'm not going to lie to you. When I started using this app, it floored me. <laughs> I literally had to do it like five or six times before I just got it right. Like basic, basic got it right. Like, ah, so, so, so crazy. So, um, okay. So this is kind of, I'm just going to show you the little icon first. So there she is. That's what it looks like. I'm sorry. I didn't, that's that little tone throw over there. Conk, 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 that little guy. And so you can like do these like little challenges on it. Um, Okay, um, and it, it kind of rates, uh, you guys can see that, but it kind of rates everything here. Um, it kind of gives it a rating. So you have like a like a three to 10 or three out of 10, four out of 10 rating. Um, and, and then you can kind of click on something. Okay, do you guys want to hear this thing? Oh, I'm, I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed. My teacher is listening and I'm going to be playing this is pretty badly. It's actually really challenging. So here it goes. I'm going to turn up my volume, hopefully. And I'm going to show you this. So you get the music, you get given the music. I'm going to show you what that music looks like. There's your music. And it gives you the basic pulse. And now the idea is you're going to play along. It's telling you if you're out of tune, it's telling you if you're out of time, it's telling you if you're too high or too low. I'm going to say like, it's not always a hundred percent accurate. Like you'll see, I'm going to show you this in a moment. What happens here? Um, but it is pretty fun. I was really having a great time with this app. So if you want to just have some ridiculous, silly fun, get involved. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to play this. Okay. So you press. At the end there, I was like bombing out. I was like, no, that's not a G. That's not a G. It is really quite amazing. It puts you under so much pressure. Um, I know. I love my Muramatsu. Can I just say it? I really do. I want to show you guys the, what, what this looks like now because it's super interesting. Sometimes it doesn't like fully record or like it doesn't fully show you like, like you played the note and then it says you hadn't played the note or something. So, you know, take it with a pinch of salt. But basically the little green, I don't know if you can see, the little green things mean that you got it right. The little like red thing over the line like that. Sorry, I'm not going to put my finger there. It's going to blur it. Um, the little ready things over the lines. Come on, camera, you know you love me. Okay, okay. It doesn't want to focus anymore. It was so elegant. Okay, anyway. So it, it kind of shows you the little, when it's like in red like that, it basically means like, you know, you, you failed. You did really badly. Ah, there it, there it comes, there it comes, there it comes. So it like shows you if you were in beat, all of that. 
it's it's pretty fun I'm not gonna lie to you it's pretty fun as a professional musician I had way more fun with this thing than I like to admit because I'm like no I don't even have to tell me I'm playing well but I'm like this is this is really fun um, okay, so I don't know that I actually have included that app in the description, you're quite right. I'm going to just type it in here for you. Oh, it's telling me to sign into my own chat. I'm going to sign into my own chat. It's called Tone Stro. Um, I wonder if I can... Yeah, somebody, um, somebody just maybe write it in. <laughs> Thank you, Bridget. Oh, she thinks I'm fantastic. <laughs> I don't know. Oh. Um, it's called Tone Stro, guys. So, uh... T-O-N-E-S-T-R-O. There it is. Somebody's written it in. Thanks, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Very fun little app. Great for sight reading. So I would definitely recommend and use that. Okay, guys. I, this chat, I mean, this live stream has gone on for quite a while. I know we had a lot of teething issues in the beginning. Um, the last, I, I, I'd hoped to kind of chat a little bit about recording. And somebody had specifically asked me about recording. Um, how to record. And maybe I'll just mention it is my advice for anybody that's starting to record themselves and wants to do those like layered, multi-layered um, videos. I have actually done a video about this, so you can go watch that. But basically is um, is to go look at, um, oh, brain is blanking, to go look at acapella, sorry, acapella. Oh my gosh, my brain was just blanking. Okay, app called acapella. Go have some fun with acapella and just start creating little multi-tracks with that. Um, <laughs> I know my students are telling me it's great to get a pat on the back from the teacher. Oh, sometimes I'm very German. I'm like, okay, let's fix things. No, I hopefully am complimenting you guys too. So yeah, acapella is um, a little app you can play multi-tracks you can kind of like load it over each other it's super easy to use so just go and download it um also it's not in the description but uh i can even show you guys what this little app looks like for those of you who want to record your own stuff and or it's not even for recording like just for normal recording yourself i'd almost just say just use your normal recording device on your phone but if you want to like play those like multi-track things if you want to play it for example like a flute quartet and you want to play all of the parts together so here's the, the app that I recommend. Whoops, wrong way. Uh, that little guy over there. Oh man, I'm, this is like mirrored. Okay, there, that little guy over there. Acapella, super great app. There it is. Okay, that little guy, Acapella. Really, really, really helpful little app. Um, you'll see here, I mean, I've tried out the number of like apps I've signed into in the last like three days is actually ridiculous. My poor, poor, poor email accounts. But uh, I've tried out a lot of these apps. Some other nice little apps that are quite useful. Uh, there was this little app, it's called Tonara, which is like a little practice app. I am very German. I actually am half German. That's a real thing. That's a real thing. So I, I, I sometimes, I'm like half German, half South African. So sometimes my personality just kind of comes out. <laughs> um, okay. Ha, 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 ha. Bridget has just asked me a fantastic question. Um, and I absolutely think I should have been speaking about this earlier, um, is your setup. With all of this, with playing with your online lessons, with all of this, is you're going to need to pay attention to your setup. How are you standing away or close to your camera or whatever it might be? Now, I am standing right, right now. I'm about, I'd say like half a meter away from my camera and my microphone. I could just pretty much reach out and touch you guys. However, I have found that the further away you stand from your camera and your microphone when you're playing and when you're in a lesson, the better. It's actually a lot easier to teach and it's a lot easier to work with. So I'm actually going to just get up here for a second with my instrument. So say I'm having a lesson. I would almost recommend standing like a good two meters, meter or maybe even two, maybe a meter is far enough. I'm about a meter away from my camera now. Obviously, I'm going to be a little bit softer my speaking voice but hopefully you can actually hear me better now uh, yeah you can hear me better now and see me better now but you'll hear the sound is a bit better on the flute because it's not quite so close to the microphone and not quite so direct so we've really got better 
as opposed to maybe being a little bit more here where you've got bigger chances of what we call peaking the mic where we really get that distorted kind of sound because the flute sound is just too loud for the mic I've got my my gain I don't think it's set very high at the moment so I, I, I don't know if it would be peaking let me check it it should be peaking a little bit I don't know if you guys are hearing it peaking at all um, it, it very well may be so that's the, the thing that to stand a bit further back and the other thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to turn down the volume quite low in in zoom in the app you'll see you can actually control the volume of that microphone you can kind of move it up and down and you want to have it really down on the lower end you don't want to have it too soft because then you're going to number one not be heard and number two you're going to start the microphone's going to or the the zoom's going to try and like uh what's the word like ma um, amplify some of the other little noises or the noises it is getting but you want to yeah you want to have that microphone a little bit turned down and i really especially with the flute stand a little bit further back when you when you play and you perform um this is something that i've also been realizing is actually much better i've got a little a little student who stands quite far back and actually the best uh, best way to teach her i can really see her whole body i can work with her um i can see her perform this is where i think it's better to have a laptop rather than a phone because on a laptop you just got a bigger screen so it means you can see your teacher from a bit further back um and you don't have to be standing or you don't have to be quite so close to be able to be seen. The other option though would be maybe if you did have like an external camera is to move the camera or the microphone further back and then have the screen closer to you so you can see better. Yes, clips, clips is the, is, is exactly the right, um, is the right word. It's sort of like a, yeah. Okay. And that's because I'm, I've now obviously set my audio, not so much for playing. I've set my audio for speaking. I want you guys to be able to hear me clearly. I'd say in the lesson you want to set your audio mostly for playing and stand further back play and then come rather come in a little bit if you if you're having more kind of talking or you're having a, a sort of interaction like that 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 would really be my um, my recommendation and something that I actually also want to work with a lot of my students is that we just find maybe even just step a bit further back to um, yeah just to to get a little bit more of the full body it really really will help your teacher to be able to work with you and see what you know where you're at um cool guys the one other thing i want to i want to suggest um that we we speak very briefly about is what's going on socially online in terms of flute playing there are so many amazing uh, and I mean like amazing performers and musicians, teachers that you would spend hundreds, hundreds, hundreds of dollars getting lessons with that are putting stuff up for free online. Really cool. And I've linked one particular Facebook group in the description that I think is absolutely awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. A lot of really cool players in there um, that I know and that I've seen, you know, stuff being posted that I'm just like, wow, this is awesome. So people like Amy Porter, that's I, I mentioned earlier, is putting up videos. People like Paul Edmund Davies, also a giant of a flute player and teacher who's putting up little videos and tutorials. Uh, Robert Dick, I think I mentioned as well, he's been doing stuff for a while. Awesome, awesome, awesome guys. Um, there's lovely, amazing videos by um, Leah Pearson, who is just phenomenal, phenomenal uh, sort of teacher in body use and um, body awareness stuff. Putting up, she does like Facebook live posts you know i think pretty much every day awesome stuff like i've watched some of his stuff and just felt like better just watching it so i'm going to encourage you guys go check out that facebook group go join that facebook group i try and post on my own facebook page as much of the stuff that i see coming through and trying to keep you guys you know just engaged and, and giving you guys some um, some nice things to work with and have fun with but but really that's my recommendation go go there go check out um Go check out these awesome guys because i think i'm learning so much like i'm watching some of the stuff or um on on one of our sort of part of the performers classes we have a little facebook group a sort of private facebook group as well where the performers in the class can just discuss things with each other and like people are posting awesome stuff in there and i feel like i watch the stuff and i'm like yo i'm learning so much getting different perspectives 
um, all of that. The Facebook group is called Keep Calm and Flute On. I love it. I think it's awesome. <laughs> Uh, that, that's yeah that's quite literally the name of the Facebook group so guys that like let's use this time I really that's the thing I want to encourage us I know it's a scary time I know it's a crazy time I know we're having to think about things online and how to you know how we're gonna do things and how we're gonna move and it is it is it is awkward it is scary it is uncomfortable but there is so much potential in it so much so that I got so excited this afternoon when I was starting to watch some of these videos and, and just learning and I was like, man, I'm so excited to share this with you guys because I'm so, there's just so much potential in this time um, as a community of flute players and I'm just, I feel, you know, I've spent a lot of time off Facebook. I literally, I haven't deleted my account because I need it for my, you know, my business stuff and it's a great way to connect with people and with you guys, but I, I was so tired of my personal Facebook page. Um, and I deleted it off my phone and I, I just I was like I can't and honestly I've sort of been obviously going back on a little bit more uh, also because I'm you know just monitoring some groups on there and stuff and I feel like in this time as as hard as it's been for many of us and for many people out there being sick or unwell or having family members that are affected or just being in lockdown there's been this kind of genuine sense of people sharing and giving and like it's sort of like some sort of genuineness and authenticity that has returned to human beings. And I, I love this. I think this is really awesome. Thanks guys so much for being here. You guys are amazing. Um, I'm going to be wrapping up in about two minutes as well. I know this has been going on for a while. I need to learn to speak less, but I'm so sorry about the little bumps and hiccups in the beginning. That um, is hopefully something we're going to iron out in the next live stream that we do. Um, I will be scheduling one soon again and we will give this another a run and hopefully it'll be a little bit more organized and put together. So yeah, go check out those spaces, guys. Uh, also, I've got a bunch of stuff as well available. So I've got my Patreon page. We are going to be having another live stream on Tuesday. This one is going to be person in person. So we're all going to meet together on Zoom as a big group. And we're going to just have a time to ask questions and have problem solving and all of that stuff so if you guys want to get involved in that go onto my patreon page i'm honestly making this available to all my patrons at the moment the the kind of step in is just two dollars so if you want to be part of that live stream as well it's it's more kind of like a giant class please uh, get involved there as well uh website got resources up available i'm working furiously night and day at the moment well not entirely through the night but well it's 10 o'clock yes yeah it's, it's nearly half past 11. so i'm working furiously to just try and really add value to this community and get things going and step things up it is lonesome lonesome me at the moment i'm figuring all the stuff out on my own so just be patient but yeah i love you guys you guys are amazing you guys are awesome um and yeah i'm glad you guys got value out of this and i hope that we do many more of these in the future um Stay healthy, guys. Stay sane in the craziness um, and just sending so much love throughout the world. Cheers, guys.